All right, today we have an A1706 uh, MacBook Pro with no backlight on the screen. So we heard it just chimed and we see we have no backlight on the screen uh, whatsoever. So no backlight on the screen on A1706s can be caused by a few different things. So most commonly on an A1706 or an A1708, you have a bad screen or you have the flex cable defect. So how do you look for a flex cable defect? It's pretty easy. So let's go over to our microscope view here and let's have a look at our screen. So if we go to the bottom of the screen, you see that we have a few flex cables. So this is where the screen uh, connects to the machine. We have a flex cable right here. This is mainly for the webcam. It also, I believe, has some image data lines in it. And then we have our uh, flex cable for our backlight right here. Now, typically when these um, go bad, they get cracks right about at the edge of um, where these two ground lines end. So here's a ground line, here's a ground line. You'll usually get a crack right about here and you'll see it if you depress the flex. You'll see that crack uh, become pronounced. And that's not the, the case here. So we either have an issue with the screen and or we have an issue with the board. Now let's go over um, what can cause a board issue in the backlight circuit on this machine. Backlight board issues are actually fairly rare on this machine because the backlight uh, driver does a fairly good job at um, uh, preventing the circuit from blowing from liquid damage and shorts and stuff like that. So it's, f it's fairly rare. However, the most cases of board-related backlight failures on the newer Retina machines, so a1398, A1502, A1706, A1707, all the newer MacBooks will usually be a shorted um, capacitor on the backlight output line. The backlight fuse will seldomly blow from a short on, on these devices. Um, what's more commonly to blow is the um, input resistor. It's usually a zero ohm resistor to the five volt line um, to the backlight driver. So we'll go over that later, but uh, the first thing I want to do is check for a short on backlight output with and without the screen connected. So we are simply going to check for a short on, on these capacitors right here. These, these row of capacitors is oh, almost always backlight output, especially if it's near the backlight fuse. So this side we have 71 ohms to ground. And this side we have zero ohms to ground. This is going to be the ground side. This is going to be the backlight output line, of course. Um, and we have 71 ohms to ground. Now, 71 ohms to ground is a bit too uh, low on a circuit that handles um, 50 volts. So we need to rule out now if we have an issue with our screen or our board. So that's easy enough. We're just going to unplug our screen flex cable here. And let's see if our short is gone. So let's check again. And we still have 71 ohms to ground. So we now confirmed that we have a motherboard issue here. So the next step here is to pull the board out and have a look. All right, system board is out. Let's go ahead and put it under the microscope and have a look. So it looks the board looks totally clean. I, don't, not, I do not see any liquid damage or anything suggestive of um, something on the user that would cause this to fail. Um, the main thing I want to look at is going to be these ceramic capacitors here. Um, and... We're just looking for like cracks and stuff like that, and so far these guys look absolutely fine. Um, they they do not look like they have any signs of failure. They look totally fine. Oftentimes you will be able to see a crack in these when they go bad, and on this side of the board, these look totally fine. I see nothing wrong. Let's have a look on this side. Same thing here. These look clean. There's no cracks, no signs of damage. Here's our um, diode right here. Our diode looks all right. Looks like there might be something on top of it, but it doesn't look like it's cracked or anything. Backlight driver looks all right. Don't see any issues there. So at this point, we're going to have to inject voltage. Um, that's going to be our, really our only way of finding this fault because everything lo else looks really, really clean. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the schematic and find out where we're going to inject voltage to. And I want to talk about a few, a few things about proper voltage inje injection in a line uh, like this. So looking at the board view here, it's, it's pretty apparent that there's only a couple places we can inject uh, voltage to. We're not going to want to inject over here. Um, we are going to want to inject where the highest thermal mass is going to be. So right around uh, right around this area where all these capacitors are. 
I do not want to inject into a very small component because not a lot of current would make it in the board. So we need to inject somewhere where a lot of current can get into the board and these capacitors are the only option here. Now, you can get confused because sometimes you'll solder the wire to these shorted components. That's one thing we need to be vigilant about. So what we're going to do, we're going to inject voltage. We're not going to start at 50 volts or anything like that. Do not start at a high voltage. We'll start with one volt and go up from there and uh, see what gets hot. First off, I'm just going to add a bit of solder onto the uh, pads right over here to make it a little bit easier. Lead free is kind of hard to solder to. I'm just going to add a little bit of lead it in here just to make it easier on that wire. Just like that. We'll get our wire. That's a good joint there. It's fine if it's bridged because these are all on the same line of course. So now I'm going to get my ground lead and let me get some isopropanol to uh, dump on that short. I guess we can go ahead and uh, connect the board to ground on the power supply so it can start getting warm. And we're only taking 0.42 milliamps, so we're going to have to crank the voltage up a bit. So I'm going to go up to... All right, three volts are pulling one amp, and five volts are pulling five amps. So let's uh, give that a second here. Let me grab a syringe with isopropanol alcohol, and let's go ahead and inject a little bit of... Look at that. Okay, check this out. Alcohol can stay on the top of that one. It boils right off right here pretty cool. So we know where our short is now. That was easy. So let's disconnect our DC power supply, unsolder this wire here. We'll clean that up later. And let's go ahead and remove this one capacitor. Just confirm our short is gone. And our short is indeed gone. So we have no more short um, on backlight output. It's good to go there. So let's go ahead and grab a new capacitor. I am not going to overload the board with flux. It's not needed. Um, the only thing I want to do here is clean up that one joint because that does not look too good. Um, because obviously when we are... Um, Injecting voltage like that, we don't really care about how the joint looks, so it doesn't really matter at that point, but when I'm giving something back to the customer, of course, I want it to look look nice and professional. So we are going to wick away this excess here. And then we will add a little bit of flux on uh, that one pad, as well as the um, solder on the board that we're going to be soldering that replacement capacitor to, so we only need a, a really little bit there. Same with right here. Then I'll just touch up. It's like that. We do not need to add solder to the uh, other pads. There's plenty on there already. So when replacing these caps, uh, many boards have the same value capacitors. So you could pretty much take it from any of the newer Retina boards. A1502s are fine. Um, a lot of these a lot of these boards have the same output capacitors on it. Uh, so in this case, I will take it off of one of our brand new M1 donor boards. So here is an M1 board. This is actually a delitted M1 board. I pried it off. So if you want to know what's under the cap of an M1 processor, that's what it is. Little die, nothing really special. But it has the same backlight capacitors that we need. So we're just going to pull one of those off and replace it and then uh, clean the flux up and test this and we will see if it works. Um, I'm pretty sure it will.
that is soldered. We'll let the board cool down, then we'll clean it up a bit. The board is now cool enough to be cleaned. You never want to just dump um, um, alcohol onto a blazing hot board because you can cause cracks in components, especially capacitors, so you don't want to do that. Flux, again, is not really that harmful if left on the board, but it's still, I do not like to leave it on um, high voltage circuits. And that is good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, reapply the thermal paste on this board and test it. One interesting thing to note, too, is that crack is actually on the bottom of this capacitor. So we were looking at the tops and the sides. We can't very well see the bottom of it. And you could clearly see that capacitor is fractured. So this can happen uh, from heat. It could happen from drop. Sometimes it happens for no reason at all. Uh, but most commonly, heat or, uh, heat or drop is to blame for this. Um, and yeah, that's for sure. That's got a pretty good crack in it right there. All right, our uh, board is back in the enclosure and uh, pretty much everything but the Wi-Fi antenna is plugged back in. So let's go ahead and plug in this charger and let's see if we get a backlight on the screen. So we have five volts, 20 volts, it's starting up now. Let's see here. Should chime here in a second. There's a chime and the screen is lit. And that is an Apple logo. So this is definitely, uh, the backlight is fixed on this, this device. You can see that it is now booted into an operating system. And that's about it for this one. So this is a relatively simple, uh, no backlight repair. Um, you know what to look out for now on these newer retinas. So just to recap, flex gate is most common. Check your flex cables. If there's no crack, check for a short on um, backlight output. Normally, if it's a board issue on these, it will be a, a um, short on backlight output. Backlight driver issues are very rare with the exception of the um, input resistor to the uh, backlight driver. Other than that, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you in some way.